All right, good morning to the athletes, family members, friends, and staff in attendance. We're glad that you all got here safely, uh, due to the weather, obviously. But welcome to Signing Day, December 2019. We're here today to honor the tremendous athletic accomplishments of the select group of OHS students that will play at the NCAA level. I'm Stephen Sklar, your Master of Ceremonies today. Ms. Miller did a good job acknowledging the other broadcasting students around the room. They're going to be helping out with the process, and we're going to be using the footage uh, taken from today to make a commemorative video that will be found on the OSIDE HS Broadcasting YouTube page in a couple of days when we get around to finishing the video. Uh, I guess let's start by introducing the athletes, starting on the far end with Mary Cecil, who's going to be playing soccer at the University of South Carolina Aiken. <laughs> Next to her is John Gamara, who's going to be running track at Harvard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ashley Ladner playing soccer at the University at Buffalo. Morgan Rin, who's going to be swimming at Penn State. <laughs> Next to her is Julia Schwoznik, who's going to be playing lacrosse at Duke. <laughs> Louis Gina Soraya, playing soccer at SUNY Oswego. Kat Stanford, who's going to be joining Morgan on the swim team at Penn State. And last and closest to me is John Seppi, who's going to be playing baseball at Cabrini. I'd like to metaphorically hand the mic over to Mr. Jeffrey Reisner, the athletic director here, who has a couple of words to say. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. I might remind you that uh, it looks like Stephen will be going to Syracuse yes. in their broadcasting school, so you might see here the next. <laughs> you, all, you all know Marv Albert, Bob Costas, so we may have the next uh, announcer in the country here in Stephen's call. Thank you very much, Stephen. So welcome, everybody, to our first college signing ceremony here in Oceanside. Uh, this is another memorable moment in your kids' lives. This is one of those things I call the moment. Well, you look back on your kids and say, wow, I remember when they first started playing their sport in kindergarten or third grade or fourth grade, watching them in the states, watching them in the counties, watching them on the fields. This is another moment in their lives. Certainly when they go off to college in September, you'll experience some more of those moments. Uh, we're honoring and celebrating with eight student athletes con committing to continue their academic and athletic careers. We here in Oceanside Athletics firmly believe that if a student wants to play in college, we will do everything we can to get them to play where they want to attend. We are committed to do all we can to help them succeed. And this is what all your hard work has been about. Students, you've studied, you've prepared your, for your career, and now you're going off to play in college. What better way to do the next four years to play and, and, and to, to study and play? Thanks to our Board of Education, Dr. Harrington is here, our superintendent, our assistant superintendent, Mrs. Pro, uh, Mrs. Provito is here, Mrs. DiCarlo is here, some of our AP, uh, APs are here, Mr. Luisi, our, uh, my, my right-hand man in terms of college uh, advising, uh, guidance counselor here, some of our coaches are here as well, and um, we want to thank uh, my secretary, Mrs. Marks. She really does all the work. I don't do anything. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Miller, this is absolutely incredible with your kids. Who cares they're learning? By the end of the year, this would be like the best operation you'll see in the United States. There's nothing like this anywhere on Long Island. Mrs. Miller, kudos to you and your group. You guys are awesome. Um, congratulations to parents, to the coaches, our teachers, our counselors, student athletes, and all our friends that are here. You should be very proud. And a special thank you to Mr. Luisi for all he's done to help with these kids. Enjoy, enjoy the moment. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Reisner. Steve. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we just, uh, just uh, wanted to congratulate um, on this special time for all of you because you know all of these young people have worked so hard. And Mr. Reisner you know, is planning this event at this time, and it's special, I think, because it's at the holiday time, as we all know. And the holiday time is about joy. And as I was saying to a couple of the moms and dads, is there really any greater joy in life than when you work hard for something and you reach your dream? The happiness and joy from that 
is one of the greatest times, greatest feelings of your life. And every one of these boys and girls work so hard, and I'm so proud of them, you, as you are, because you work so hard and you reached your dream. And now we want you to see the joy at this time <coughs> in your life and keep it with you forever and ever. And moms and dads, thank you for all the support you gave us. And I want to say a special thank you, Mr. Reisner, because he's been a, like, a, like an inspiration to me and to all the young people. How many times did he come into the <coughs> office and say, John, you can do this. Julia, you can do this. Morgan, you can do this. Catherine, you can win that championship. And all of you, he is behind all of us. How many athletic directors even know the names of, the, of athletes in their school? And Mr. Reisner, now he knows the names. He's so supportive and encouraging me and them to reach for our dreams and keep doing that. <coughs> Don't ever stop. And I thank our administration, um, Mr. Call, Dr. Harrington, Ms. Bravito, um, for all your support, and John and, and Lisa and um, Mindy, thank mm -hmm. you for guiding these people, these own people, because today, remember it always, the joy of reaching your dream. And we'll always be here for you. And we even have some graduates here who, um, we have a guy from Syracuse, Luke Schwazek, who just graduated, and he, he was up here one time before, and now he's back again. And we thank you all for coming. Mr. Reiser, thank you again. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, before we start the interview portion of today's event, we'd like to say thank you to everyone that showed up, that made their way, trekked their way through the bad weather. Uh, we appreciate it. I'm sure the athletes appreciate it as well. Let's give it up one more time for the eight athletes that we have. Hi, my name's Matthew Monero, and I'm with John Gamara going on to Harvard University for track. Now, uh, John, why Harvard? Well, they initially contacted me first. At first, Mr. Luisi over there gave me a call into his office telling me about Harvard, and I did not think Harvard was a possibility for me whatsoever. So working with Mr. Luisi over the summer, um, finding that this could be a fit for me, and working with the track coach over there really gave me a better scope on what Harvard's about. Mm -hmm. By the way, it is incredible. I mean, usually not many Oceanside students are going to an Ivy League school of that caliber, so congratulations, of course. And I'm guessing your coach has helped you a lot along the way. Would you agree? Yes, he has, especially you know, with track and field. I'm relatively new mm -hmm. to this sport, so you know he really took me through, through a path, and I'm going where I'm going, so he definitely did something right. That's amazing. And I know you're also a part of the soccer team in Oceanside as well. Was it hard to make the choice between track and soccer, or you knew you were going into track? No, most definitely. It was the, probably one of the hardest decisions I've had to make in my life. I played soccer, you know, ever since I was young, track. I've only been running for two, three years. Wow. And, you know, the transition from soccer to track, I'm still getting used to. But the support from my, my coaches, my teammates, Harvard track and field coach really helped me um, make, the make this hard decision. Well, everyone's proud of you, man. Awesome. Incredible. Thank you. Hi, I'm Chloe Gross here with Morgan Rand, who's going to Penn State for swimming. So why Penn State? Um, it was definitely just the best fit for me academically and okay. swimming-wise. I feel like I'll fit in. And when I went, I just loved it. What advantages do you have knowing you're going to swim with your former teammate? Um, it's definitely going to make it a lot better. I'll just have a piece of home with me if I ever get homesick. She's right there. And we always push each other, so it's going to help us the next four. What advice do you have to the students who are going to swim at the college level? Definitely just to follow your dreams and never give up. Always stay focused on yourself and just know it will take you there. And last question, do you have any role models you'd like to thank? Um, my parents. I'd like to thank yeah. my parents because they've always told me not to give up and they always push me to be the best I can be. Thank you. We wish you all the best of luck. Hi, I'm Frank Labatine and I'm here with Mary Ziesel. Mary, what first got you into soccer? Um, I first started playing soccer when I was younger, and I just liked how it was the competitive nature of it and how you really become friends with everyone that's on your team. Do you plan on pursuing soccer as a career? Um, right now I'm looking at going into some sort of athletic career, not directly with soccer, but hopefully continuing with other sports and helping kids with other sports. What was most appealing to the sport? Um, I really enjoyed how you could go on a field and every position, every person mattered. Even people that weren't playing mattered just as much as people that were on the field. And it's really more of a team sport than some of the other sports. Is there anything you would like to say to any kids who are um, just starting this? Any advice? Um, just enjoy it. It goes by so quickly. It's such a good time and just enjoy every second of it. Okay, thank you and good luck.
Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Ashley Ladner going on to the University of Buffalo as a midfielder in soccer. So Ashley, why Buffalo? Well, I chose Buffalo because I, when I visited originally, I loved the campus, I loved the coaches, and overall, like I loved the program. One of the biggest things about Buffalo I loved was that it's such an upcoming program that I wanted to be a part of it, and I wanted to like help it grow, which is what I'm excited for most. That's awesome. And I haven't asked anyone else here, but it must be a, just a major weight off your shoulders getting into a college now. Uh, how has it been? I mean, it's crazy because I com verbally committed to Buffalo like February of my sophomore year, so it's wow. been a long time. So just the fact that it's like here now is crazy to think, but I'm excited. That's incredible. Okay, well, thank you. I wish you luck. Thanks. I'm with John Seppi, who's going to Cabrini University for baseball. When did you start baseball? Uh, I started playing when I was probably a toddler, maybe five. It was always something that I did. It was something my parents got me into. What do you like most about baseball? Uh, I like the team aspect of it. I like playing with my friends. I like the individual achievement you can get from it. And I like the feeling of winning with, the fr with my friends. So. What excites you the most about playing at a college level? Uh, it's just kind of like the idea of being able to get to play at the next level because most people, they don't get to do that, but it's just a great feeling that people recognize you as kind of good enough and you get to meet new people and learn at a new environment. Are you hoping to go pro? If I could, I would love to, but we'll have to see when that comes. I'm going to work to get there, but it, it may, may or may not come, I hope. Do you have any role models that you'd like to acknowledge? Uh, my parents, you know, they helped me really go to the next level. They encourage me and they motivate me for everything in my life. Well, thank you. I wish you the best of luck. Hi, I'm Frank Lapatina and I'm here with Luigina Soreo. Luigina, what first got you into playing soccer? Um, well, I started when I was very young, but my sister played soccer, my mom played soccer, so I just got into it, but it ended up being like something that like changed my life, so I'm happy I started playing. Do you plan on pursuing soccer as a career or just a hobby? Um, I'm going to stop at college. I might play like, like on the side, but like I'm not going to play like professional. Is there any advice you want to tell anyone who's um, coming up into the sport, anything they should do? Um, I would just say to always stay with it. Um, you're going to get discouraged, obviously. People are going to be um, better than you, but you have to just like stick with what you like. Okay, thank you and good luck in college. Oh, thank you. Hi, I'm with Katherine Stanford going on to Penn State uh, for swimming. How long have you known you wanted to swim? Um, I think since I was like five, since I've had the competitive drive to just swim, and I love competition, that it really like spoke to me and that I would choose it, to do it in college. How has the support been from all your friends and families and, and everyone in your life as guidance counselors? Um, everyone in my life is really supportive. Shout out to Mr. Luisi for helping me through this process. And really my parents and my coaches from all over, they're really supportive. Like every meet, they're always there and always cheer for me really hard. I know one thing about the swim team is that you guys wake up at inhumane hours, at least five in the morning right before school, or at least whenever you have it scheduled. Mm -hmm. Has that um, bettered you in life for the four years you've been in high school? Yeah, it has bettered me in, in, for my life because one, waking up early really helps your mindset for school to start, and doing two practices really like help my speed, and I know in college I'll be waking up at that time anyway, so I had to get used to it. Okay, well that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. I'm with Julia Swaznik, who's going to Duke University for lacrosse. So what attracted you to Duke? Um, it's definitely just a really um, challenging environment, both academically and athletically. And I think it would just really better me as a person and a player. Um, when I arrived on campus, I felt like it was just such a perfect fit for me. And I fell in love with the team and the coaching staff. And it's really like a dream school to me. I've, I've wanted to go there since I was a little kid. And, you know, I couldn't have pictured anything better. What can you bring to the team? Um, definitely, I have a... I'm very motivated and I have a really um, hard work drive and I feel like I'll, do really, I'll really do anything they ask me to do, bring the energy up, you know, just be there for my teammates every day, you know, always giving 100% and, um, you know, it's just been my dream since I was a kid and I'm just really excited to get there. 
So who's one role model you'd like to acknowledge? Definitely my family. Um, Everyone in my family has played lacrosse at some point in their life, you know, at the college level, at the top level. So, you know, I've had them by my side since I was a little kid, and my brother just graduated from Syracuse. My dad played at Maryland. My sister is a junior at Columbia. So, um, you know, they're, they're just constantly motivating me, and, you know, they instilled, like, such a hard work drive into me, and I feel like um, I wouldn't be the person I am today without them. Okay. Thank you. We wish you the best of luck. Hi, I'm Steven Sklar here at Signing Day, December 2019. I'm here with Coach Pumo one of the coaches on the Oceanside Girls Varsity Lags team. How are you today, Coach? I'm good, thank you. So Julia Schwoznik's going on to Duke. Now Duke requires not only a lot of good play, but a good character too. Mm -hmm. What about her screams, I'm ready for this D1 opportunity? I think she's a great team player and she's always had that captain mentality since she was in eighth grade, almost on varsity. So I think that captain-like mentality is really gonna help her in the classroom and also on the field. It sort of sets a standard, you know? You have one person go to Duke, and you kind of now expect a lot of people to try to follow suit, fall in line behind Julia Schwoznik. What kind of, uh, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I think that she set a really high standard for the rest of the, the girls, but I think that it makes the girls work a little bit harder to try and get to where she was. She's entering her final season as an Oceanside varsity lacrosse player. What are her goals for the upcoming season? Well, she's coming back from an injury, so I think she wants to come back healthy. She wants to become, come back strong as she was before the injury, and she just wants to make sure that she is, like I said, a captain on the team, and she makes sure that everyone is working up to their ability. All right. Thank you so much, Coach. I'm here with Coach Kelly of the varsity track team. How are you today, Coach? Doing very well. How are you? Me, I'm doing fine myself. I said something very similar to Coach Puma when I uh, interviewed her just a couple of minutes ago. Going to Harvard, that sets a standard. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, yes, I do. Um, and John is the exemplar of that standard of what it means to be an Oceanside student going on and further achieving both athletically and academically. And running at Harvard isn't easy. No. It's D1, you know, like Ivy League, top caliber talent. Do you expect him to fit in well at the track team over there? I do. Um, uh, you know, he, he's got a lot of character, he's got a lot of heart, and uh, he, he's really motivated. And I think those are all very important characteristics when you're going to a school like that. And uh, he's definitely, he's visited there a couple times, and he's definitely shown those kids there that he's ready. What do you plan on doing to get him in the best shape possible for Harvard next year? Um, uh, well, he, we, we definitely have to develop him a little bit more in the weight room, but uh, he, he's learned a lot about what it means to be a track athlete over the past year, so now this year is about really conditioning him and getting him strong and healthy to really excel when he gets up to school. All right, thank you very much, Coach. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm here with Coach Winchester of the Oceanside Girls Varsity Soccer Team. You're here with a lot of kids every single time we do this. How did you get so good at your job? They make it possible. I mean, they, they, they love what they do. And, uh, and when you have a team that wants to play for you and produces what they do each and every year, it makes my job easy. So uh, having these girls for the four years and being with me in middle school as well, has made us almost like a family that we that I've watched them grow up into fine young ladies now and make that choice on going on into college and pursuing their love for soccer. And I'm sure you're not tired of coming here. I'm sure you enjoy watching your players come here and get the recognition that they obviously deserve. How have they influenced the next generation of Oceanside soccer stars? I think it just motivates the younger generation, whether they're siblings coming up or just teammates that have been with them probably inside and outside soccer, you know, through the years of intramurals and travel uh, with the community and then through the high school. So for many of them, they've been together for 10 years already. And, you know, this is the easy part when they get to a senior year and choose to go to a college that, you know, they want to pursue their, their goal and their future. It's going to be hard to replace them. I think I say this to you every single time that we talk because you have such great talent leaving every single year, but you always find a way to fill in those spots. Who are going to be the girls that have to fill in the spots come next year? That's the unknown. That's, that's why it makes my job so interesting because, you know, comes, come August, 
the people that you assume will be, you know, filling those spots, all of a sudden someone comes out of the woodwork, and the next thing you know, you got all these great athletes trying out for positions that you say, you know, not that the ones that leave are easily replaceable, but, you know, because you always miss them and you want to continue following them in their college career, but it's almost like telling the next, the next group they have to step up, and someone always manages to do it. So having that luck of, you know, coaching them for all these years, I've been very lucky to find the girls to replace the girls that naturally move on. And I'm sure whoever has to step up is going to do a great job. Thank you so much, Coach. So, okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm here with head coach Mike Pastilio of the Oceanside Boys Varsity Baseball team. How are you doing today, Coach? I'm doing great, Steve. How about yourself? Me? I'm doing fine. So, John, he sort of played a minimal role on the team last year, you know, playing behind Chris Sickless, who obviously went on to do his own things at the next level. There's two ways you can react to that, really. Sort of that beast locked in a cage looking to come out or you can kind of cower behind that and come out a little bit slow, especially to start off the season. Every coach is going to say that when a player has to move into that starting role now, they're going to be that beast coming out of the cage. Why do you expect that out of him? Well, I mean, last year in his first game, he fell, filled in for Chris, and uh, we were at Calhoun in a non-league game, and he was his first that bad of his high school career. He had a home run. Um, so he was prepared for that, and he did have to sit behind an all-county first baseman, but I know he's eager, and I'm eager to see what he can do on the field for us this year. Now, how did he react to being in that role? Because he's going on to Cabrini now. He's going on to play at the NCAA level. He's an NCAA talent. Yep. It must have been hard for him to have to sit on the bench for a little bit last yeah. year. I mean, he definitely helped us out in the DH spot. And um, But again, he got a chance to uh, watch and learn behind a really good first baseman who uh, started for us since his 10th grade year. So unfortunately for John, he had to wait a little bit, but we're excited for him to play this year. He's going to be our guy out there, and we're looking forward for a big season for him. Well, you're moving into a season in which you lost a lot of the starting players from last year. There's going to be a lot of substitutions. John leading the pack with yep. one of those, with being one of those, you know, notable highlighted substitutions. Right. What do you expect out of this team with a lot of first-year starters? Yeah, I mean, we're bringing back one player that started for us, our right fielder, and everybody else um, is going to be new. So that's exciting and challenging in the same breath. Um, it's a good opportunity for a lot of kids to show us what they can do. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Coach Madden, the only swim coach here at Oceanside High School. You have two girls that are really, yeah. really, really good swimmers. Can you elaborate on how much they have meant to the team for the last couple yeah, of years? Yeah, so Catherine and Morgan are, they're not just good swimmers, they're phenoms. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point we see one or both of them in the Olympics, quite frankly. Um, they've been amazing for the program. The accomplishments, the notoriety they've gotten us has helped us increase our recruitment each year um, to the point where we've had the biggest girls team we've ever had this year. And now the boys team, is, we're at the point where we have to make cuts because we have over 30 boys coming out. And um, I don't know if that would be happening, quite frankly, if it wasn't for the success that the two of them are having. Yep. I said this to Coach Pumo when I was talking to her about Julia. I said this to Coach Kelly when I was talking mm -hmm. to him about John Gamara. Two girls going to Penn State. It sets a standard, no? Yeah, it's going to be hard to top that. Um, a lot of people say maybe I should just retire from coaching now and go out on top like Michael Strahan. But, um, no, I, I think that it was great, a great opportunity for the, the girls on the team to swim with them and get better and aspire to. And you know what? Like, it's going to be hard to top that, but we look forward to trying. How is their relationship, because they're obviously very good friends, how is their relationship going to impact the Penn State swim team? Well, I think Penn State's very lucky to have these two. I mean, both of them, are, their times are so good that they'd already be ranking in, in the NCAA doing really well. So they're only going to get better with that D1 Penn State training. Um, I look forward to following them and seeing how they do, but they're definitely going to be a huge asset to Penn State. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Right, thanks, Steve. Eight athletes, fantastic athletes, moving on to the NCAA level next year. I asked three coaches a very similar question. Does the accomplishment of their athletes set a standard? They all responded the same way with a firm yes. I would agree. Oceanside High School is now the standard for college athletics. One going to Harvard, one going to Duke, two going to Penn State. Congratulations to all of the athletes that are moving on to the next level. I'm Steven Sklar, and for all things Sailor Nation, we are the Sailor Station.